The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 889 Just Take the Bribe Felicity's nose crunched in her sleep. She stirred and shifted herself, hugging her pillows tighter. She tried to roll over but was too heavily tucked to budge. But something was wrong with her bed and the disturbance grew until she blearily cracked an eye. Hey, girl, the lay whispered, laying inches from her in her bed, head propped seductively on a hoof. Beep, Felicity squeaked, though the lay silenced it with a wingtip. Oh, oh my, did I sneak? I'm so sorry, I shh, the lay whispered. It's like one in the morning, and I figured if I was going to wake you... I'd do it in a way you'd appreciate. She fluttered her eyelashes and shifted herself against Felicity's blanket stack. So? Felicity stared, panting slightly from shock. M my heart is going a mile a minute, darling. Please don't... One in the morning? The lady bit her lap. Yeah. On a scale of ten to ten, how bad of a time is this for a real important talk? And can I make it up to you by letting you cuddle me? You look lonely. Well, it's not like I'm getting back to sleep immediately now, Felicity whispered back, her face visibly red even in the darkness. But Maple should be sleeping, and I really don't feel up to moving around. The lay smirked. What if I carry you and told you I found a heat control on those magical fireplaces in the lobby? Come on, she pressed closer. I really mean it. Very well. I shan't deny you, Felicity breathed, or whatever track you've got in your mind on. But I'm warning you, I'm half asleep. Valet winked. I got this. With only two deft movements, she rose and pried a top off Felicity's blanket stack, exposing the mare to mere room temperature and carefully hoisted Felicity onto her back. What's the belly, darling? Felicity hissed as Valet tried to use her rump to prop up her abdomen. Oh, right, sorry. Valet shifted her to the side, bracing her with a wing instead, and after a short walk, they were met by the glow of the lobby's fires. Valet made a beeline for the nearer of the two, a few pillows and blankets dragged lopsidedly by her spare wing, and soon she had set Felicity down again on the closest couch to the fire. There, cozy? Felicity slumped into the couch and brushed herself off. Well, I was cozier. Darling, what is the meaning of this? I've got a friend who needs your help, Philly began. Felicity raised an eyebrow, Valet standing between her and the illusory flames. In doing so involves waking me from a very deluxe slumber? I don't see anyone else here. No, Valet said, sitting down beside her. Doing so involves us trusting each other and that involves me apologizing because the last time we had a talk about what your future was with the crew, I didn't know what you'd been doing for the last few weeks and you were actually humble and didn't advocate for yourself. And I learned that from some others and have been watching a while to see for myself and waiting for a good place to say it, so here it is. I'm sorry. You saved my friends and I put you on thin ice anyway. I owe you a whole whole lot, so at the very least, we're even now. Thank you. Felicity blearily blinked, though much more awake than she had been before. Darling, I might be a bit foggy and in need of a repetition, just to ensure I'm not hearing things. Valet leaned in and hugged her around the shoulders. How's this, then? I, I, Felicity reddened. Come on, Valet insisted, still hugging. It's the middle of the night by a cozy fire. I know you're lonely. Amber told me all about how much you like physical attention, and you even told me you liked me way back when. I needed a good short notice apology gift, so here's what you've always wanted. Friends? Felicity's ears fell in shock. Um, I'm dreaming, aren't I? Oh well. She grabbed Valet with a high-pitched happy squeal, pressing Valet's face into her chest fluff and giggling. Wow! <laughs> Valet dragged the blanket she had brought up and around him with her free wing. 
I figured it would be harder to get you past your inhibitions or self-consciousness. So, apology accepted? Felicity tried to silence her with more fluff, shifting the blankets around herself as well. Quiet, darling. Don't take this from me. And in my defense, I'm half asleep. Yeah, yeah, Volley leaned against her. I'm not going anywhere. You've got all night. But I do want this to mean things are even between us. So, could we talk? You've been going on and on about how cushy this place is, but saying nothing about personal stuff. I know you've got some ghosts that have followed you, and if I'm going to be trusting you to help my friends, you got to trust me to help you in return. How do you mean, Felicity whispered. I don't want to rub anything in your face if it isn't currently on your mind, Valet insisted. But are you really doing perfect? Felicity sighed. Why, darling? I'm very sorry, but my mind is currently in other places, including bed. If you're telling me we're even and want to sleep at my side by the fire, I'll take it and wait to question things until the morning. Yeah, but, Valet protested. A spot where Felicity's hoof was touching Valet faintly tingled, and Felicity frowned. Ah, I see. You're the one who's worked up and came to me for... She glanced down at them. I'm glad to know I'm your first pick for when you're feeling intensely about something on your mind. What's wrong, darling? No, I... But... Valet protested. Bananas. Right. The whole reason I wanted to ask you is because you can do that. Uh, she sighed. Yeah, I've had a really intense last few hours. Well, Felicity genuinely smiled. I can tell you're serious about trusting me, then. Does that mean I've really done enough? Girl? Valet stared at the fire. You were a doctor on call when all my friends were dying of injuries from Crystal, even though you're not really in shape to be working yourself. Maybe kept all of them alive, definitely kept them healthier, absolutely didn't have to, probably put him in a better place to bring me back to. Yes, you've done just as much for them as me or Shinespark or Starlight or the other members of our team, and you did it when you owed no one anything. Even how a Neonova helped, Felicity gently pointed out. And if they had apologized and felt sincerely about it instead of running off, I might have listened if they asked for a second chance too, Valet insisted. Although guarding the pantry and rationing food when you're perfectly fit and able is way less impressive than tending injuries and even going scouting when you can barely fly. Uh, Felicity closed her eyes and sighed. I won't lie, that may have been the last time I'll fly until my passenger finishes their little stay. Valet's eyes shifted towards Felicity's stomach. How is that going? I remember it was a bit of a sore spot. Felicity lifted an edge of the blanket, showing a noticeable rounding of her fur. A month past the point where I could still pretend to have my old figure. It's inconvenient, for many reasons. Yeah, I'll bet, Valet leaned against her. But if we can make it easier, we'll take care of you, Mac. I told you over and over, you and me are good now. Felicity sniffled slightly. You do seem fond of repeating it. I want it to sink in, Valet shrugged. Then you'll tell me what was on your mind enough to drive you to start this talk, Felicity asked hopefully. Starlight, Valet replied. What did you think? Felicity sighed. I suppose that's logical. What do I have to do with it? She's feeling messed up, Valet continued. Freaked out earlier and doesn't even get why. Hard enough that she apparently fainted on a road and couldn't move. I just spent the last few hours talking with her, and she's scared of herself and a whole bunch of other bad stuff. Wouldn't be surprised if she's missing her parents, too. Right, Felicity nodded. And what are you hoping I do? Valet shrugged again. I don't know. You're good at this, right? Emotional problems? You've got your cutie mark, your monk hearts. Felicity bit her lip. Usually what I'm good at is putting on a charade or getting what I want by making creatures feel worse about themselves, darling. Often with consequences. She glanced again at her belly. But I can at least try. If she's feeling something she doesn't recognize, and I do, I could tell if that would help. Maybe. Valet tilted her head and thought. I don't know what I'm looking for. Just an expert, I guess. She blinked. Oh, 
And Starlet also says Gazelle did some weird emotion magic on her. Felicity's breathing quieted. Well, that's a lot more serious then. And perhaps up my alley. You think you need to check her for anything tonight? Valet raised a worried eyebrow. Oh, no, I doubt it. Felicity snuggled back onto Valet's shoulder. Not and waste an opportunity like this. But really, the whole point of this type of trickery is to get others to do what you want, so she'll be perfectly fine throughout the night. Heh, <laughs> Valet chuckled, a wing around Felicity's back. I knew this would be the right apology gift. I'm saddened to hear you say it's transient, but I don't know what else to expect, Felicity replied. But I also know better than to look a gift horse in the mouth. As long as you're offering, I'm going to make the most of the time we have. She almost pushed Valet over, snuggling harder. Oh, really? Valet asked, letting it happen and raising an interested eyebrow. Felicity crawled halfway on top of her, using Valet as a pillow. Not like I'm going to get many other opportunities with my figure in the shape that it is. Until you say otherwise, yes, I am. Ah, I could use this, Valet grinned. Next time I need to annoy Sparky, kill this entire house with jealousy, and butter you up for a personal question, all I need is to offer to hug you. Felicity pursed her lips in warning. If you want to have a real talk about personal things, I'm afraid you're going to have to add not accosting me in the middle of the night to that list. My head is still cloudy, I'm... I'm afraid, she yawned, showing her teeth. All right, I get it. Valet lay back contentedly beneath the weight of Felicity and the blankets. You're really easy to please, you know that? It's not like I don't go out of my way to make the method obvious. Heh, <laughs> Valet chuckled. Well, I'm glad we're friends now. Let's worry about Starlight in the morning and say I owe you another talk and another cuddle later. At a better time. Deal? Felicity rolled her eyes. Owe me one? Darling, I'm still going to feel indebted to you for quite a while. I'm just not above taking gifts when I'm offered them. No, not for anything in the past, Valley insisted. Because if we're gonna be friends, then I need to get to know you just like everyone else. And it sounds like this is the best way to get you to open up. I told you, darling, I... Felicity yawned harder. The more important thing is timing. I've never hidden anything from... from you. I feel like you're sabotaging yourself here. Valet grinned and poked her. Come on, I'm offering you stuff you want. Oh, shut up and be a better pillow. Hours later, Starlight's eyes flew open. She was in a bed, and Maple was nearby. She knew that breathing anywhere. She had talked to Valet, remembered dregs of her earlier ordeal. That was over, right? So why did she have a creeping sensation that something was urgently wrong? End of chapter 889